In this video, we're going to talk about Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA. Over the course of the last year, this company is down 38.8%. Year to date, down 40.87%. So in Walgreens here, what we're going to do, we're going to go over their financials, their figure out a valuation for an acceptable buy, acceptable buy price on Walgreens. And then we're going to take a peek at the stock chart. And we'll also take a look at some uh, articles written on Walgreens because I'm sure a lot of people are well aware of, you know, this company being, uh, you know, so discounted. Uh, a lot of people want, are very attracted to that 8.73% dividend yield that they've got going on right now. So let's dig in. So we're on Walgreens 8K. Uh, they're revising their... Adjusted earnings per share guidance from 4.0, 4.5, from 4.45 to 4.65. So they're, they're reducing it, you know, about 10%. They're taking immediate actions to drive sustainable growth in adjusted operating income. That sounds not good. Um, another thing too, uh, their CEO has stepped down. But the operating loss in the first nine months was 6.4 billion compared to operating income of 2.2 billion. You know, 8.8 .8 billion dollars year over year in a nine month span is 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 not good, right? Um, operating loss in period in the period reflects a 6.8 billion dollar pre tax charge for opioid opioid related claims and litigation, which we'll see on the uh, the financials. So that's fine. So 6.8 billion that's still a 2.8 billion dollar difference, right? You know. 1.8 billion dollar difference so if you add back in 6.8 billion dollars that only puts you at a net positive of 400 million dollars so if you're you're claiming the 6.8 billion dollars you minus 6.8 or you add back in 6.8 billion dollars if this is if this wasn't there right then you know that would be uh you know a net positive 400 million dollars so you're still what 1.8 billion dollar loss from year over year for the first nine months of fiscal 23 net loss was 2.9 billion compared to net earnings of 4.8 billion uh this de this decrease is driven by a 5.5 billion tax the opioid litigation and lapping of a 2.5 billion after tax gain on a company's investments um just a lot of moving of money that I'm seeing here is just there's 2. Point billion here is 5.8 billion there 6.8 billion over going over here is a very messy very very messy and hard to understand and trying to predict the future where this thing's going to go because you got so many different variables happening so the company is going to take immediate action to drive sustainable growth five points they have here is they're going to raise the raising the transformational cost management program target from 3.5 billion to 4.1 billion in cumulative savings by fiscal 2024 so they're expecting 800 million dollars in savings uh, their implemented cat capital and project spend reductions working capital optimization program launched benefiting fiscal 24 Advancing portfolio simpli simplification to pay down debt and fund strategic initiatives. Announcing swift actions to improve the U.S. healthcare path. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Accelerating synergies between U.S. healthcare and Walgreens. Okay. okay, so nothing, those last few weren't really too important there. So the company's capital allocation continues to focus on core investments, debt pay down, and dividend payments. So we come here to the income statement. We're going to use a nine months end here. We can see our sales, our revenue is up 3% year over year. Uh, our gross profit fell 6%. Our SG&A is up 27%. But that increase here, the majority of that increase is from those litigations that we just saw in the commentary. So overall, because of that, it gives them an operating loss of $6.4 billion. Um, this other income could be interest, you know, some source of additional income there so 6.4 you add back in 1.8 gives you a, gives you 4.6 you have interest expense and then you're now at a negative five billion dollars but you get to add back in a little bit of tax benefits because of the loss so now it gives them a net negative of 3.3 billion dollars uh this most recent nine months 
So if you kind of add back in that seven billion dollars, roughly there, that that was accounted or six point eight billion for the litigations, you can see net earnings overall would actually be, you know, it'd still be down year over year, but it'd be not so terrible. But because of that, we got three point three, or sorry, negative three dollars and thirty six cents EPS. We did get a little bit of share buyback going on as well. So as you can see here, a little comment letting me know that this was the the litigation side of things that's why there's an increase there but also to note that this loss will be offset on the cash flows as an increase because this also carried over to the liability section so as you can see right here uh here's their accrued litigation obligations of 6.4 billion is shown as an increase on the liabilities which means on the cash flows it is also going to show as an increase but eventually this will be removed off the liabilities and in the future it'll show as a decrease on cash flows our cash and cash equivalents were sitting at 971 million dollars in cash accounts receivable has ticked up a little bit um this will show as a loss on cash flows because it's an increase in cash in the assets column here um, there's a chance that vendors aren't paying their bills but or they opened up more stores and then that's just a result of that is the increase of accounts receivable um, Inventories, good to see that these stayed flat, even uh, even in like this environment, because a lot of other companies are, are struggling to keep their inventories down. So good job on them to keep in their inventories at a reasonable uh, you know, level there. Current assets ticked uh, actually ticked down a, a smidge just by about you know 360-ish million dollars per share there. Total non-current assets, they they added about nine billion dollars to their intangible assets and goodwill there com combined they added about six billion to their goodwill and about three billion to their intangibles for a total of nine billion dollar increase in intangibles so basically the reason why this is higher year over year is because they said that their intangibles are worth more than more worth more now um that to me is sketch. I don't know. I, I, there's probably some reason behind it, but I never like to see intangibles at almost 50% of your total asset value is, is t soaked up into intangibles. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather see genuine assets, something you can sell or, you know, show that you own. <clears throat> so to me, I don't like that. Short-term debt increased about two billion dollars trade accounts payable increased just a smidge there uh our accrued expenses and other liabilities also up a little bit overall we're at a 3.6 billion dollar increase year over year mostly attributed to short-term debt uh their total long-term debt year over year down about two billion dollars there um, there's a chance some of that flowed over into short-term debt Here's your attorney fees here, adding to your total liabilities section it's for a total increase of $5.8 billion. Really, it's because of that. Otherwise, this would have decreased a, a little bit. So we can kind of play pretend and imagine that's not there because that's eventually going to go away. So overall, debt increased by $5.8 billion. Shareholder equity also kind of, you know, nominally decreased by about $7 million there. So they have a total debt of $69 billion and they have total asset count of 60 or sorry, $98 billion. Although I believe 56 of it is more true of assets. Down here to the cash flows from operating activities. Uh, they had a quite the big jump in difference in cash flows. It was $7.8 billion altogether, which again, this is a lot of it is attributed to that that lawsuit so basically if you if you take out this lawsuit of 6.8 billion dollars and so now overall you lost about 1 billion dollars in the last 9 months you know or sorry you didn't lose that you, your difference year over year is a, a 1 billion dollar loss so because of this litigation thing it's making this company look terrible right now um 
granted, you still don't want to see a company losing money year over year. But if it wasn't for this litigation thing, they wouldn't be it wouldn't be looking nearly as bad. However, basically from like here down is disregarding that whole litigation thing, sort of because they're adding back in the fee of their litigation. So everything from like here down is more, uh, I would say, correct of how the company is operating. But either way, we can come back up here, paid off some income taxes. They lost money with through another company that they are invested into by $1.7 billion. Another red flag for me here, though, is this, the, the, the gain on sale of a leaseback transaction. So what they did was they sold some property and the buyer leased that property back to Walgreens. Uh, impairment of intangible assets. They reduced their intangibles by $431 million. And all of these changes down here will show up on their assets and liabilities. Our operating by activities of $1.9 billion. And we subtract out our CapEx, which costs us $1.6 billion. Gives us a negative $414 million uh, loss from operations. Or, sorry. Gives us a negative four hundred fourteen million free cash flow. Uh, net cash used for investing activities, um, we came out negative three billion dollars. They sold property and leased it back from the buyer, so that shows up as a gain here. So that kind of offsets that loss there. So they had proceeds from sale of other assets of three point eight billion. Um, they also acquired a couple other businesses for a full cost of seven billion dollars and all together it gives them a negative cost in investing activities of 3.2 billion uh proceeds from debt offsets as payments of debt so basically a, a not you know a nominal exchange they bought back minority stake in their company and then they also sold back some more some more minority stake in their company for a, a net gain of 1.4 billion and then cash dividend 1.2 billion now i put a note in here saying this is possibly at risk i think that's you know it's it's always possible right it, you never know but you know it, when you really strip out this 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 liability this this litigation thing they got got going on that really makes this company this balance sheet this these financials look tremendously worse than what they actually are uh, once you just strip that out and kind of look at through how the business itself is doing yes it's declining but it's not it's not falling off the map right it's it's not uh it, it's not as bad as what it's made out to be which actually could make it, it's going to make these valuations when we get to those in a little bit it's going to make those look really bad right um, I've already seen them. I've already ran the numbers. It looks really bad. But if you can take that $7 billion out of the equation and, you know, put that back into the company, you know, overall, it's it's not, it, 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 it is not too terrible. So this could truly potentially be a, a genuine buying opportunity at Walgreens. But let's keep moving forward here. So overall, 1.2. Plus uh, 3.2 plus 573 gives us a negative, uh, well, a negative decrease, right, to our cash. So we lost 1.4 billion. We had 2.5, take 1.4 to 2.5, leaves us with 1.1 billion in cash, marketable securities, and restricted cash. Now, there is obviously some red flags overall on this company. You know, they're selling property to potentially acquire more cash you know they obviously are concerned about their overall um operating uh, activities because they stated that in their commentary above saying how they're going to do they're going to try and save 800 million going forward in uh for their operating activity so you, you know they're 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 working on it um they're they've got work to do i think um I think there's a chance this, this company is getting beaten down more than it needs to be based on this litigation thing. You know, I have not looked into that litigation thing. I don't know where things are standing with Walgreens. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand that stuff. But, 
you know, I mean, if if they can go out of come out of this relatively unscathed, and maybe it's a one time thing, and that's it, that's the end of it, and you know that might not be so bad. So now we're over here. We are at the company statistics. Um, for those of you that don't know, Walgreens is an American company that operates the second largest pharmacy store in the United States behind CVS Health. Um, it specializes in filing prescriptions, health and wellness products, health information, and photo services. Um, Walgreens generates its revenue through various channels. Primarily, it makes money by selling prescription medications and over-the-counter drugs. Um, so currently, market cap is sitting at 19, just shy of $19 billion. They pay out an 8.7% dividend yield. Uh, return on equity, this is over the last 12 months, sitting at negative 15%. We want to see positive 15%. Return on invested capital sitting at negative 7%, and we want to see 15%. Uh, again, trailing 12 months. Gross margin uh, ticked down a little bit. It's sitting at 19.8%. Uh, operating margin, negative 5%. Profit margin, negative 2.4%. Analysts have a price target on this company of $34.42. They are forecasting revenue growth. In the next five years at 5.7 again five years on earnings per share at 4.3 so when we do our forecast on growth on revenue growth and eps here we're only going to go to 2025 because there's only three analysts we only do the next three years so it'd be these three numbers here averaged out for our calculations so on our calculations here we have ticker uh, or sorry our return on invested capital 4.6 percent a little better than the negative that we uh, just saw on the other page and then here's our three-year average growth rate on EPS and our revenue growth rate. So we got negative EPS currently, and we have negative EPS growth rate looking forward for the next three years for an average. Uh, revenue growth rate forward at 5% growth gives us a Peter Lynch fair value of $10.42. Multiples comparison, CVS, Walmart, Target is our comparisons here. Obviously, we have a negative earnings per share, so this, this equation does not work out for us. Down here at manual PE, market cap, $19 billion, $971 million in cash, $69 billion in debt, cash from operations, $1.65 billion annualized of 53 and a half years. So it'll take 53 and a half years for this company to earn its market cap. Over here, price the book. We got our total assets, total liabilities, outstanding shares. Uh, gives us a price to book today of 0.64. Anything below one is always significantly undervalued. Uh, we have a forward peg also looking almost undervalued. We're sitting at 1.13. Anything below one is undervalued, and that's forward looking. Graham's valuation, we currently have uh, negative $10 because we have a negative earnings per share. Our DCF here, we have negative on taxes or uh, income and stuff so our weighted average cost of capital 6.78 is our number we'll use perpetual growth rate 2.5 our forward looking free cash flow is sitting at zero dollars analysts have it at negative 18 our average growth rate is negative 13.5 um, we can kind of see our cash from operations over the course of time is slowly tri tickling down uh, our capital expenditures uh, are kind of staying flat, starting to lately just trickle back up. We add back in our cash and market securities, gives us a DCF price per share of negative $28.83 per share. Rule 72, I put in our future EPS and our future PE. Look at that PE, four, that's crazy. Um, so I put in 5% for our growth rate based on these two numbers here, and it gives us fair value today of $20 per share, purchase price of $14 per share. So come over here, we have all of our numbers. So Peter Lynch coming in at negative here. Uh, the only positive number was our fair value here. Um, so, and this is the one that's including the future earnings per share. So if we were, you know, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to go back and put in an EPS of 5.5 .5 and a current PE of 4 and see what we get for um, evaluation on this, on this stock real quick. Okay, so I changed the EPS to 5.5 .5 and the current PE to 4. 
and what it did for us the dcf won't change because that's not part of that the benjamin graham valuation put us at 15 dollars per share our multiples at 142 dollars per share and then our fair value of 20 our peter lynch value of negative 14 gives us an average price of 26 dollars and 64 cents per share with 30 percent margin of safety of 18 dollars and 65 cents per share so what we're going to do is so the analysts were predicting 34 dollars 42 cents so we're not too far from them and so this in my opinion is looking pretty decent once you strip out that litigation thing once you say okay here's where the future eps is potentially headed we'll find out right we don't know yet until it's here but if we go off those numbers with the 30 percent margin of safety we're nearing that uh buy range i think um and we'll hop over the technicals here in just a second too so i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of these these notes here because i put these in as i was going through everything and then once I go through things a second time, you know, sometimes I forget to change things. So I'm going to kind of revamp or revise these notes here. But the good thing on this company, though, the dividend, the dividend's good, solid dividend, right? Financials are deteriorating rapidly. That is not true because of the um, the litigation side of things. They're deteriorating for sure, um, but not rapidly. They're definitely not headed in the right direction but I think they still have room to turn things around. Uh, they're going through a settlement that is costing them $7 billion, which we're aware of. Uh, the company's CEO stepped down in the midst of all this turmoil going down with the company. A little bit of a red flag. Full year guidance revised down. Taking immediate action to, to drive sustainable growth and operating income. Okay, uh, Sales basically flat. Gross profit is down. SGA is up 27% because of the litigations. Uh, they have a negative free cash flow right now of $1.5 billion. And they are selling property only to lease it back out to the buyers of the property, like, likely to free up cash, right? So they, there's some, there's a lot of moving parts going on right here. Like this isn't all just one section. This is like the whole company is just like shifting and moving things. It's just like, what do you make of this? I don't know. So... Anyway, but let's uh let's take a peek at the stock chart and see where this stock might be headed. So we can see once upon a time, Walgreens was $75 a share and is now trading all the way down here at $22 per share. It is clearly in this downward channel. It is also clearly sitting near or at this support range of $22 to $17 per share. Honestly, if this thing peaks into this range and if this litigation thing starts turning around, I think this stock has is room to head back higher um we're looking at like a range of this 20 that's called 27 to 20 30 dollars per share uh is what this company is potentially worth right um based on the valuations we just did based on future valuations and then also what analysts are also expecting so we're we're in the ballpark of like 30 to 32 dollars per share for a mid-range between the two so uh technically speaking here I'd really like to see this thing peak into this range. I think it's going to because of the uh, uncertainty right now of everything with it. Um, sometimes you got to look past that and just look at the financials and dig through the financials a little more to see how things are actually playing out at this company. And I think things are not as bad as they're made out to be. So, you know, personally, I think this might be a a bit early to buy i think this thing can push down another two three four dollars before i think there's a good chance if it breaks through this this trend line there's a real good chance we're coming down to 17 dollars per share and i would uh if you're gonna buy in and maybe buy in at maybe 25 percent right now and then once you hit 17 that might be a place to load the boat but if she breaks down below i would definitely be cautious and potentially put a stop loss in because its next stop is, you know, down here at $2 a share. So I would just be careful in the meet, in the meantime until things start to clear up because right now uh, things are pretty, they got some pretty dark skies above it right now. And uh, I wouldn't want to get, I wouldn't be want to be caught in the storm. So that is my conclusion on Walgreens. If you found value in this video, please drop a like, subscribe, 
and we will be back tomorrow with another stock analysis video and also if you would like a stock analyzed drop that down in the comments as, as well and we'll add it to the list of future stocks to uh, value